Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to machine a rotor, a disc brake rotor, on the off-car brake lathe. So we'll start off by removing the setup that we had previously to machine a drum. Remove the hold down nut. Loosen the pivot lock. And then you can remove the whole bar assembly and set it aside. We're going to install the twin facing tool. Again with the same lockdown nut and washer that we used for the drum setup. I'm just going to leave it kind of loose for now because we're going to have to make small adjustments. I'm going to move the cross feet out just to make some room here so I can slide the rotor up onto the spindle. Okay, we're going to machine a hubless rotor and so the setup onto the spindle will be very similar to the setup that you use when mounting a drum. I've selected a smaller drive plate to fit inside of the hub and you can see it's nice and clean, no debris or excessive rust to get, in the ray, to get in the way and cause any kind of run out issues. We'll use a spring, the adapter cone fits centered nicely. Carefully put the rotor up on the spindle. I try not to drop rotors and drums on the spindle. Spacer, self-aligning spacer, and then finally our nut, which again is reverse threaded. And snug it on. Okay, next I'm going to rotate the cutter dials back. I'm going to rotate the spindle in, and that's as far as it'll go. So I'm going to slide the twin cutter face or tools out a little bit so we can center the uh, rotor in between the cutter bits. So snug that down, move the spindle out, move the cross feed hand wheel in. And then get the rotor, you can just eyeball it here, somewhat centered between the cutter bits. We have these lockdown knobs we're going to loosen so we can move the cutter bits in. And as they get closer, you can make small adjustments to get them centered. You're trying to get the cutter bits to go in and line up on both sides of the rotor. So they come in like this. You don't want one cutter bit to be ahead of the other cutter bit. You like to have them lined up as closely as you can get them. But again, it's all just by sight. Okay, when we're machining a rotor, we have the cross feed lever here. We have a, a slow speed and a fast speed. Uh, again, generally you do two cuts, a rough cut and a finish cut. So we'll do a fast rough cut first and a finish cut, a slow finish cut second. Now, Just like with any uh, machining operation, we need to dampen the vibration. And so we have a band silencer here that we can locate around the center of this rotor. Or in some cases, the rotors are so thin or they're solid rotors, they're not vented rotors like we have here then you can use these silencers over here. So using the wrench that stays with the machine, I usually loosen them up. Line them up on both sides, both faces of the disc. And usually I kind of pull them together a little bit so that the spring tension here can press the silencer surface right up against the disc brake surface 
and then snug it down. So that'll greatly reduce or eliminate any kind of tool chatter. Sometimes you don't need these things at all and you can just use the belt. We'll try just using the belt first and see if that suppresses the vibration. We'll install the belt. Has these little lead weights all the way around here that help dampen vibration. Also kind of help hold the belt into the vented part of the rotor. Okay, before we turn on the machine to begin establishing our depth of cut on the rotor, I always like to stop at this point and make sure that my feed lever is turned off, the spindle feed lever is turned off. I'll even put the auto lock up against it and I'll lock down this lock nut here just to keep that just whatever we can do to keep that spindle from moving. You don't want to accidentally come up and accidentally engage that or else it will move the rotor right into your cutter tool and ruin the rotor and maybe even the tool. All right, now we're going to turn the rotor, turn the machine on and we're going to run the cutter right up until it touches the rotor. Barely touches. Same thing for the other side and that will establish our zero. Okay, we have these adjustable collars so we can line up our zero. Each increment is worth two thousandths of an inch. So now that I've got the cutter bits just barely touching, I'll call that zero and then I'm going to take the cutter bits out to the edge of the rotor and then you'll notice they stop touching. That's because most rotors are going to wear much more thinly on the outside than they are towards the hub. There's let less heat transfer out here, so there tends to be more wear on the outside, less wear on the inside where there's a place for the heat to transfer through the hub. So you need to keep that in mind if you're going to machine a rotor that uh, you're probably going to be light on the outside cut and deep on the inside cut and you're going to want to adjust your cutters to kind of split the difference there. While we're here though, I want to go ahead and take this ridge off. You can see there's a pretty uh, steep, thick, rusty ridge there and I wouldn't want to establish a depth of cut on the inside of the rotor have it come out and then dig in deeply to that ridge. So we're going to take that off by hand. Okay, at this point, while I remove that ridge, I'm going to go ahead and lock down my cutter bits just to make them a more rigid at this point. And then by hand, I'm going to move those cutter tools out and slowly remove that ridge. Okay, I've moved the cutter bits back towards the center of the rotor. I have my zero established on my cutter dials. I'm going to run the cutter bits in towards the hub. Now you can hear I'm making a thicker cut as I move in towards the center of the hub. That's because I've got a lot of material coming off on this inside cutter. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and make this outer cutter make a touch here. We're going to go right in, just undercut that rust just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and advance 2,007 inch on one side, lock down the cutter bit, advance 2,007 inch on this side. That would be a minimum cut. You could do a deeper cut than that. You could go as much as 10 thousandths on each side. Make sure you tighten down the cutter bit so you don't get vibration. Uh, you'll get a pretty bad cut if you forget to tighten those little thumb wheels down. And then we're going to do a rough cut first. So that's a fast speed. We'll move the lever forward and then you can see how it auto feeds into the uh, rotor.
the rough cut is pretty fast. It only takes a couple of minutes on a rotor this size. Now we're getting thin out here towards the end. Getting a light cut. All right, so we know we have that material removed along with the ridge. I'm going to go ahead and put the feed into neutral, bring it out by hand just to be sure we have all that material off on the edge, and we do. And I'm going to run it back in. Again, just to the edge of where the pad material rides on the face of the rotor. Loosen the lock nuts. And then if you do your calculations right, cut deep enough so that all you need to do is one more cut at the finish cut pace. Make sure you have those lock nuts thumb tight. And then select the slow speed for the auto cross feed engagement. And here we go. So this will be a slower process, but it'll be the last cut that we need to take, and it'll be a super smooth, nice finished surface. Okay, and then if you're off working on the car somewhere, there is no auto shut off on this. So the machine will continue to run but what will happen is this will just unscrew until it gets to the end of its threads. The motor will run, but the cutter bits will stop advancing. Before machining your rotor, don't forget to check your belt placement. The middle pulley is what's going to cover most passenger car and light truck rotors. The outer pulley for small rotors. The larger inner pulley for very large rotors. So during that machining of the rotor process, we never touched this area over here. Again, we want that spindle to stay stationary. We don't want it to move one way or the other, or we're going to ram the rotor right into one of the cutting tools. So just make sure you have it shut off, locked down. To keep this video short, we didn't perform the scratch test like we do in the drum video. But you can do the same thing by putting your cutter bit up against lightly touching a, a slight scratch on the rotor, rotate the rotor, loosen the nut, rotate the rotor on the spindle 180 degrees, move the cutter tool maybe a quarter or a half of an inch away from your original scratch cut, then run the cutter tool back in, do a light scratch cut, and you should see again two parallel lines that line up right next to each other that proves that any run out issues that you might have are in the rotor as opposed to in the setup. Again, if those lines are not parallel, then you've got a setup issue you need to take a look at. Okay, now if we're going to machine a rotor with a bearing race, or in other words, a rotor with a hub, then you're going to use a different adapter. You won't use these cone shape adapters. You'll use these rounded off special shaped adapters that will fit into the bearing race. So the hub will need to have the race installed and you find an outer adapter for the outer race, an inner adapter for the inner race. Okay, so with this hubbed rotor. We just slide the adapter for the inner race, slide the second adapter in for the outer race. We won't need a drive plate or anything. We'll just set up our spacers. And after we attach the silencer band, that rotor will be ready to machine. Be sure to clean off the chips from the machine, sweep up the floor, and hang up the adapters and cones in an organized fashion. Thanks for watching.